policy and legislation will only be one component out of several components in a regulatory framework. A regulatory framework is something rather complex, comprehensive, and if you look at the global cybersecurity agenda, you will see that legislation is one component out of five pillars. Um, therefore, when you're drafting a regulatory framework, um, policy might be a starting point together with a strategy, but policy and legislation at the end will only be a small percentage of the total picture. It cannot solely be one component. Like what you will find is that some countries, when they try to develop a legal framework for cybersecurity, they were only looking at cybercrime. But cybercrime is only one component. When we're talking about a comprehensive framework, we have to talk about other topics as well. You might want to address topics like critical infrastructure protection with a specific legal component. Or you might want to deal with electronic signatures um, that can also play an important component. Therefore, when looking at the whole landscape, a uh, framework, a legal framework for cybersecurity contains different chapters, ranging from something like data protection to criminal abuse. Well, CERS in general have a very important role when it comes to protecting critical infrastructure or cybersecurity in general. Mm -hmm. um, their role differs from country to country, therefore we can't give the one answer. But in general what we can say is that a CERT has a certain technical knowledge and it can play a role as an advisor within the government um, and can explain what are the, the situations that we're facing it right now, what are the phenomena that we're confronted with, what are the challenges that we're facing. And this can then lead to legislation or can be an input for a legislative or policy developing framework. A legal framework um, is something complex. If you draft it by just asking a legal drafter to put it together, you're risking that you ignore some of the major things that other stakeholders might have as an input to this process. Therefore, my recommendation would be to start with an assessment, first of all, to analyze what is there in place already. You don't want to duplicate. So before drafting legislation, you would analyze, is something in place already? The second thing would then be stakeholder consultations, where you're trying to get all the different stakeholders, from technical experts to government experts to civil society and civil liberty groups, in a room and discuss the findings of the assessment and what needs to be done. And based on the input from this assessment, you would then start to draft legislation. But it should not only be the legislation at the end. Apart from typical things that you would draft in addition, like explanatory notes, you would also look into developing training courses on the basis of the new legislation to make sure that key stakeholders, like for example judges or certs or the private sector, do understand what are the responsibilities within this new framework. Well, actually, there isn't much consensus. Uh, what we've seen is on the international level, um, a couple of General Assembly resolutions on the UN level, uh, this is certainly a very important way forward. Mm -hmm. However, when you're looking at the discussion of the international community on a topic, one component of cybersecurity, which is cybercrime, you will see that there is not really consensus so far. What I'm hoping for is that after a long period of time of discussion, we might see movements ahead, because cybersecurity is something that is relevant for all of us. We're all using the same protocols when it comes to technology, therefore the threats are the same for all countries that are connected to the internet, and I believe that the way forward should be an international agreement on some basic principles, plus then on the national level, really something that is completely fitting to the demands of the country. This was a very interesting week of training because it was not um, a monologue, it was a dialogue. Uh, we had experts here from, from Vietnam, high-level government people, but also technical people that are working in the field. And it was very interesting to see on the one hand side they had very precise ideas of where they want to move on, what their questions are, so we discussed topics that they have asked us to discuss, but at the same time they provided some inside view on where they put the priority, what is currently in the focus, and what is the way forward for Vietnam. Well, I believe that um, this is a challenging situation for each country. Maybe the, the large countries have the possibility to allocate resources to developing a comprehensive framework. However, there will be a lot of countries that don't actually know how, how to move forward right now. This approach always needs to be individual. And this training course can give you an idea about what are the different components, what is the methodology we can use, what are best practices from other regions. And this will allow them ultimately to use this as a blueprint for developing their own national strategy.